With the academy taken care of, we can then move on to looking at brains. The way in which ML Agents works requires all brains to be set as children of the academy. In our case, we're only trying to learn one kind of behavior, the pushing of the block, so we only have one brain, which is aptly named the push block brain. Now, if we look at this brain game object, we see that it has a brain component attached. And this brain component defines everything specific about the decision-making process for the agents, which are eventually going to use this brain. So that means, in particular, how do we set up the observations that the agents will use, and how do we set up the action-taking process? Now, the brain doesn't define the specifics of these. What it defines are the parameters in which these things must fall. So this means defining the type and size of the observation and action spaces. I'm going to walk you through a little bit about what that means. If we look here under vector observation and space type, we see that we can either choose continuous or discrete. Discrete for a observation means that we have a finite number of states in our environment and we can enumerate all of them. So you can think of a very simple game, for example, a tic-tac-toe game, where there are only a few hundred possible states and we may want the agent to specifically learn about each one. In contrast to that, we have continuous and continuous observations are probably going to be used in the variety in most in the variety of most games which are made. Continuous observations means that we use an entire array of floating point numbers to define the observations that the agent perceives. Now this can be things like the position of objects in the scene, their velocities. It can be things like specific information about the agent, whether it has a certain item or not, or about the agent's health. It really means anything that might be important for taking a decision. We then have stacked vectors, and this corresponds to how far in the past should the agent be paying attention to make its current decision. So if we set this to one, all the agent uses to make a new decision is going to be the most recent observation. If we set it to something higher, like in this case three, the agent is going to use its current observation plus one previous observation and the other observation before that, all concatenated together and sent to the neural network. We then have visual observations, which allow us to attach cameras and use those for input. Since our environment and problem is so simple, we don't need to use cameras. We'll move on to actions. Once again, the action space can either be discrete or continuous. In this case, a helpful example is thinking about a controller. A controller can have a series of buttons, and you might choose to press one button at one time and another button at another time. This corresponds to discrete actions, where we're picking one out of multiple choices every time step. In contrast, there's the continuous action space. And we can think about continuous actions as being the analog sticks of the controller, where we can be pressing multiple analog sticks at once, and they can have specific values that don't necessarily correspond to being pressed or not. In this case, our agents have six actions, the ability to move forward, backward, left, and right, as well as rotate left and right. Lastly, there is the brain type, and this corresponds to how we'll actually be making decisions. It can either be set to the player, which means that we can define keyboard input to map to actions, the heuristic brain, which means that you can drag in your own scripts and custom AI controllers to control this brain, the external brain, which means we will use our Python and TensorFlow training process to control this brain, or the internal brain, which means we're going to use an embedded neural network that's built into the Unity engine itself to control this brain.